Hey everybody, Dr. B here. And today I don't have on a cool science t-shirt. I have on a button up shirt. Uh, just got back from lunch. Uh, today's my wife and I's anniversary. So anyway, no fancy science shirt today. All right, I'm here to talk to you about chapter eight, which is impulse and momentum. So let's get right to it. Should be able to see my screen at this point. And you can see uh, this driver is going down the road and hit the brakes and the truck stopped, but the giant piece of concrete uh, was not as anxious to stop. The giant piece of concrete had a lot of momentum. And so there you go. Well, you can see the result. All right. All right. Some things to know. The withdrawal deadline is coming up July 15th. Um, if you're considering withdrawing, let me know. We can talk about it, see if it's a good idea or not. Um, I'd hate for you to put in a lot of work and withdraw, but maybe you still could have achieved your goal. So uh, let me know. Also, just a reminder, our final exam is Sunday, July 24th, and it is from 7 to 9 p.m., right? Uh, that time is fixed. I can give you a little bit of leeway. Uh, on either side of that, 15 minutes either way, but like basically it's that time and it does count for 20% of your overall grade. All right, now momentum is lowercase p. It has an arrow over it and you should know what that arrow means. It means momentum is a vector. All right, and that is defined as, that's why there's three lines here, defined as mass, which is a scalar times velocity which of course is a vector. You can see that in your textbook. All right. So whenever you have a vector, you know, you know by now direction is important. All right, what are the units of each side? Well, the units have to be the same. So the units on the right, kilogram, meter per second. So the left has to have units of kilogram, meter per second. So that's the unit of momentum. You may not realize, but that's one of the few that doesn't have its own special name. So maybe that's going to have your name on it. Um, you know, the Newton, Pascal, things like that have a special name. Even the Joule, we were just studying in work and energy. So you uh, make a great contribution to the field of physics and the, the momentum unit may get your name on it. All right. Oh, what has more momentum, a stationary dump truck or a feather falling to the ground? Pause. Think about it. The feather does. The feather has more momentum because the velocity of the dump truck is zero. So it doesn't matter that it has a big mass. Big mass times zero is still zero. Uh, whereas for the feather, small mass times small velocity is, well, bigger than zero. All right. What has more inertia? Ah, so inertia, is it the same as momentum? Nope, because the dump truck has way more inertia than the feather does. Remember, inertia and mass synonymous for our purposes in this course, um, but definitely not the same as momentum. The stationary dump truck has more inertia. In fact, the dump truck has more inertia no matter what it's doing, whether it's stationary or not, but when it's stationary, it has less momentum than the moving feather does. All right. What is more momentum, a 60 kilogram person traveling at three meters per second or a bullet? traveling at 400 meters per second. And I ask this question because sometimes people talk about the stopping power of a bullet. If somebody's like charging at you. Um, so I thought this would be interesting to uh, calculate. I'll give you a moment to try it out. You can pause the video here and then unpause when you're ready. All right. So you should have found that the person has more momentum. They have a 180 kilogram meter per second of momentum, whereas the bullet has only two kilogram meter per second of momentum. So it has 90 times, the person has 90 times more momentum than the bullet in this instance. Okay, now thinking about momentum and thinking about what changes the momentum of something. So we've, we've been studying mechanics all semester how and why things move. And this chapter is yet another take on analyzing that. 
but it doesn't mean it doesn't fit in with all the stuff we've done before because it does. And hopefully you'll see that as we go through this. So when a car is slowing down from 50 to 40 miles per hour, is it changing momentum? Absolutely. Its mass is staying the same, velocity is changing, and the force that's causing that air resistance and some, some internal friction or rolling friction possibly, uh, most likely as well. All right, a ball that is traveling at 20 meters per second hits a wall and bounces back at 20 meters per second to the left. Did it change its momentum? Well, the speed of the ball was the same before and after, but the velocity was not. And it's actually a really large change in velocity. The change in velocity is 40 meters per second. So very large change in velocity, so yes, and it's the force of the wall that caused that. In this case, um, yes, it's a change in momentum because the car sped up and the, the force that caused it was the force of the truck. And last but not least, cars on the highway traveling at 40 miles per hour west, takes an exit ramp, still going the same speed before and after, but just like in B, it's changing its direction. So there is a change in velocity, which means there is a change in momentum. And the force that caused that, well, this is just like the last problem in the module seven note packet. It is static friction that's causing that. Of course, in that problem, I just referred to it was a textbook, not a car, but same idea. It was, and it was a textbook in a car. So anyway, just relating that back to problems we've already analyzed. So all these things that were changing when we said there were changes in momentum, it's because the velocity changed. And so before, when we talked about those, we said all of these things accelerated, okay? And that was true. And since their velocity changed, their momentum was also changing. So good to think about it both ways. And you'll see, this is another way that we can use to solve problems, understanding about momentum and impulse. Uh, so I was talking about acceleration a moment ago, and that may make you think of F equals MA, but when Isaac Newton first wrote it down and talked about it, he wrote it in terms of momentum. The net force is equal to the change in momentum over time. And this is actually a more general form than this equation um, because this equation applies to something that has a constant mass, whereas this can be applied to anything um, and you're like, wait a minute, don't most things have constant mass? Yeah, but think about there are things that change mass. Your car changes mass as, as you go because it's using up fuel. Not too noticeable, but a rocket, a rocket gets rid of like, I don't know, 80 or 90% of its mass in fuel as it's going up. It's burning so much fuel so fast that its mass is changing really rapidly. And so this is a great way to analyze a rocket that's changing mass. All right, what are the units? Well, this side has units of Newtons because it's force. This is kilogram meter per second, as we talked about on the prior slide, and then per second. So kilogram meter per second per second. And that is the same as a Newton. Or about that. All right. Now, let's get on into the impulse momentum theorem, uh, which says delta P, sorry, I don't have this on the screen. Let me just get my pen there, is equal to, hmm. hold on for one second. Yeah. Net. times delta T, okay? This is lowercase t, so it's time. So net force times time. And this idea of impulse, this is a little bit of a hard word to understand, uh, but we can say that the impulse on an object is equal to the change in momentum of that object. But we don't want to get confused because we say impulse like acting on an object and force acts on an object, but we don't want to get confused and then say that impulse and force are the same thing. We want to, whenever we see impulse in a conceptual question, we want to think of it as 
change in momentum, okay? We think of it as change in momentum and we try to answer the question, we have a much better chance to get it right. All right, now we're gonna take a look at a video here. I like to do this as a in-person live demonstration. Obviously we can't do that here. All right, so here's a video I'd like you to see. Hopefully you'll be able to uh, hear what he's saying as well, but if not, you can watch the video on your own. And really, I just want you to see what happens in this demonstration. Here's my favorite demonstration of impulse. I have two eggs, same mass. I'm going to try to throw each egg with the same velocity. That means they have the same momentum. If the impulses were equal, why do we have such dramatically different results? The wall applies a big stopping force over a short time. The sheet applies a smaller stopping force over a longer time period. All right. So you got to see that the two eggs, which were identical in mass and going at, we'll say the same velocity, um, one, definitely broke and one did not. So how does that happen? Well, as he was saying in the video, uh, the one that hits the, the wall, there's a big force applied for a short time. And these, these times, these uh, numbers aren't meant to match up, but just to show you, um, just representative of large force, small time versus small force, long time, this would be like the sheet. But either way, you get the same impulse because the impulse is the force times the time, so this is two times 10, you get an impulse of 20, or five times four, you get an impulse of 20. And the impulse has to be the same for both eggs. The impulse has to be the same for both eggs, okay? And we're gonna do calculations to show you why it has to be the same, okay? So no, they don't experience the same force. Yes, they do experience the same impulse. All right, so now we're gonna do some calculations to go along with that. So I looked up the mass of an egg, they're approximately 0 0.07 kilograms. And we're gonna say both eggs were traveling at 22.3 meters per second when they hit their target, which is about uh, 45 miles per hour. Uh, let's see. So the initial, we had the velocity of the egg was 20, 2.3 meters per second to the right, and we'll make the right the positive x direction. So we do need a positive direction for this. And then final, the egg was stopped. Okay, so it was moving to the right, and that's positive, and then it was stopped at zero. All right, so what's the impulse? Well, impulse, which is itself a vector, it's equal to the change in momentum, which is a vector, which is equal to F net delta T, and F net is a vector. Well, we can't find it like that, but what we can do is we can say, okay, well, change in momentum, that's final momentum minus initial momentum, which is equal to MVF minus MVI, where we have the same mass before and after. So our impulse is equal to, well, zero, because the final velocity was zero, minus 0 0.07 kilograms times 22.3 meters per second. And let's see, just a quick calculation. That's equal to 1.56 kilogram meter per second. All right, and that's for the brick wall and for the sheet. So that applies to both. because both the sheet and the brick wall stopped the egg. And so it has to be the same. The 
So that's the question for there. But now we can think about what about the force? All right, so the force is not the same. The, the wall broke the egg, the sheet did not. So why is that? Well, it has to do with this part right here. Let's estimate the times involved. And just for the sake of argument, we'll say the time for a wall was, I don't know, stopped it in, say, one one hundredth of a second, and the sheet stopped it in maybe a quarter of a second. So looking at, at this, we can say that F net is equal to the change in momentum over the time, remembering that momentum, momentum and net force are both vectors. So our change in momentum, 1.56, okay, that's our impulse, that's our momentum, same thing, over 0 0.01 seconds. And so our net force is 156 Newtons. Okay, that's what's exerted by the wall. And for our sheet, 1.56 kilogram meters per second over 0 0.25 seconds and maybe around six. So 6.24 Newtons. And so you can see there's a huge difference in the force that one applies versus the other, but the impulse is the same for either one. All right. This is the hardest thing probably in this whole module right here. So if you can get this, should be good. It's gonna take you a little bit of practice with the conservation momentum, um, a little bit of practice on doing impulse problems, but then you should be good. All right, let's just do one more impulse problem while I have you here. Uh, Captain America blocks a 10 kilogram, I'm sorry, not 10 kilogram, a 10 gram bullet with the shield. Bullet was traveling at him at 300 meters per second, bounces off, goes right back toward the shooter at 200 meters per second, tells you how long it was in contact with the shield. So this is very, very similar to that one we just did. We'll draw a diagram, okay, a sketch of before our bullet has a velocity initial of 300 meters per second, and after or final. It was going the other way and it had a final velocity of 200 meters per second. But what have we not done? Well, we haven't picked a positive direction. We'll say the positive directions to the right. That makes this one positive and this one negative. So now our impulse which is equal to change in momentum, which is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum is equal to zero, oh, not zero, sorry about that, negative 200 meters per second times 10 grams, and 10 grams, just put it right here, we can write in terms of kilograms, because there are 1,000 grams per kilogram, so oh, boop, 0 0.01 kilograms, minus 300 meters per second times 0 0.01 kilogram, kilograms. All right, so negative 200 times 0 0.01 minus 300 times 0 0.01, and we get negative five kilogram meters per second is our impulse. Okay, and that negative sign does make sense. The impulse is, to the left, and essentially it's saying that the shield was pushing to the left, but that's really the force, and we're gonna to get to that next. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that impulse is equal to change in momentum, but it's also equal to net force times time. And so we can do the same thing we did on the egg problem. We can fill this in, negative five kilogram meter per second equals F net times 0 0.05 seconds. And we're gonna divide by the time. And so negative five 
divided by 0 0.05 is going to be negative 100 kilogram meter per second per second, which is a Newton. Okay. Now we've got this negative sign. Does that make sense? The force is acting in the negative direction. Yeah, absolutely. The bullet was moving to the right. The shield pushed on it to the left with a force of 100 Newtons for 0 0.05 seconds. And that, that caused it to uh, change direction. All right, would the answers be different? No for impulse. And what about for force? Yes, the force would be, let's see, if we divide by a bigger number, we're gonna get a smaller net force. It's gonna be half as big. All right, well, that's it. Uh, go ahead and work through the note packet. Look at the videos that go along with that. And let me know if you have any trouble. All right.